grand scene. Uh, no, I, someone said money. I never got, I've still never made a dollar on this project. Yes, but how much have you spent? <laughs> More than the budget. Uh, what drew me to this project originally was, uh, you know, I, I didn't know Jeremy before this. Um, I was introduced through one of my best friends from college who told Jeremy that I was an ex-baseball player turned actor. This, this um, was when we did not have a Mickey. And my DP Christian said, if you don't fucking cast Mickey, I'm not flying up there to make this movie. And I was like, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, I got, I got, I got a Mickey. And then uh, and his buddy goes, oh shit, my buddy used to play ball in college, and then he broke his arm and he became an actor, would he work? And I was like, you asshole, like, maybe, yeah. He's a baseball player actor, that might help, thank you, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, fortunately for me, I was sent the script before I agreed to, to play the role, which is amazing for an amateur actor. You never think you're going to get sent a script before accepting a role. But uh, I read through the thing in, uh, I don't know, maybe an hour, you know, a 120-page script in an hour. It was 109. Um, yeah, well, close enough. Uh, and I, I just loved it. I, I, I was never a big horror fan until we started going out to festivals and I started seeing kind of these elevated uh, genre pictures. Uh, and for me, the script just read not as a horror film, something that I never wanted to do, but it was more of a character-driven drama and uh, it was something that I definitely wanted to get on board with. So I, I, I met Jeremy and... He met Jeremy and said, how much money am I going to get from this? <laughs> and it was none. Generic. The battery is an old school baseball term for the dynamic between a pitcher and a catcher. If you ever watch a baseball game now, you hear the old announcers, they'll always say, man, the infield from left to right is this, blah, blah, blah. And the battery tonight is, and then they name the pitcher and the catcher. It's just that combination of those two people, which, and, and, and I got a lot of heat originally to change it, make it something of the dead, baseball of the dead. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in, in trying to... And trying to keep with this thing, it was, it was a battle all through. Every time you want to do something like really genre-y or really like, you know, a classic trope of, of the zombie movie, every time it was, seemed a little ridiculous, we just remind ourselves, it's about these two guys. Keep reminding yourselves. And that's what the title came back to. They're a battery. It's, the, it's these two guys. That's why we took out the pneumatic nail gun that they used to kill the zombies with. And the chicken wire on the windows and the nails through the baseball bat. All the shit you probably would have liked. We're like, fuck that, cut that, it's not guys. I, this movie's a whole, this entire movie's a ripoff of children of men, I'm sorry. Um, and you know, everybody, everybody steals subconsciously. I always say that a good artist steal, great, a good artist borrow, great artist steal. So I'm a great artist. <laughs> no, but I, rem I just remember that, what I loved about, I loved children of men so much and I remember that it, that movie ends just when you want it to start. And we never had, the, we were never going to have the resources to be able to show this massive compound or whatever the orchard is. So I just thought, again, it was in keeping with these characters. Once the <coughs> dynamic of the character stops, the story should stop. Um, so even though I have ideas of what's going on in that, in that compound, it, it wasn't right for this story. It's right for the sequel that you're all going to fund tonight. <laughs> We shot in uh, we shot in upstate Connecticut, a place called Kent, Connecticut. They actually shot like one of the Friday the Thirteenth movies there, and they shot some of I Spit on Your Grave there. And um, uh, one of the producers was like, "You got to come see this place. There's a 120 acre decommissioned Girl Scout camp that I think I can get the keys to." And I was like, "Oh shit, it's cool. There's like buildings that are rotted down." And so we shot the majority of it up there, and it was it was awesome. The town was really cool to us. They can take our bones, Woo! bury them deep under the river, but we'll still be together, and we cannot be defeated. They can take our trombones and pack them down there with us, but no matter how long it takes us. When we dance, we dance together under the
That was a fucking dream come true. I love this guy for so long. Thank you so much for coming. Please come over to the office and have a drink with us. Yes, they will be there. Ask them anything you want. Thank you so much.